Hello Summoners and welcome back to another ProGuides video. My name is Nathan Ning and I'm here with the 12.15 mid-patch update. We'll be going over the updated tier list for all 5 roles and follow up on the balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you want to check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Anyway, let's get started on this tier list. First, we'll start off with our top laners. Garen gets a promotion to the OP tier. If you want a low risk, high reward champion, Garen is 100% a pick that you should pick up. He's one of the easiest champions in the game, so it's not like you need hundreds of hours learning his ins and outs of his kit. Really, you just have to learn when you can go in for the trades, and with him doing dumb amounts of damage and being really tanky, that's usually all the time. He's definitely not a sleeper or off meta pick or anything, but he's also not so popular that you'll struggle to get your hands on him. He's also right under what Rai considers to be too OP, so he's pretty much never nerfed. All in all, he's an extremely strong juggernaut with a lot of carry potential that you should consider adding to your pool. Oh, and one last thing, summoner choice matters a lot on him. You pretty much never have to bring TP. Having any two of Flash, Ghost, and Ignite is almost always better. Singe is ripping the rewards of the buff this patch, so we're moving him up to the OP tier. The stat buffs to his early ranks of his ultimate are nice, but really his passive buff was what really made him so much stronger. Being faster and having it proc way more often makes him both a lot more slippery. As a result, he's both harder to pin down and kill, and more difficult to peel off backline carries. Auction moves up to the OP tier as well. While there haven't been any buffs to Auction or the items that he builds anytime recently, the overall meta shifts that we've been seeing are very favorable for him. The vast majority of strong picks in the top lane right now are Juggernauts, Tanks, and other immobile champions. This makes for a pool of champions that he can easily bully. While Auction is able to get a free early game, he's an absolute terror in the mid game, and can easily take over and start running the show. When Aatrox suddenly shot up last patch, we moved him up to the OP tier, but it started to look like he was just a bit of a one-patch wonder. He still looks pretty good, but nowhere near as OP as last patch, so we're moving him down to the S tier. Darius also drops down to the S tier. He's definitely still a good option for carrying games, but he's just not quite as safe and consistent as our OP picks right now. Sion moves up to the S tier, bordering on pushing his way all the way up to the OP tier. As we've talked about in the past, when it comes to looking at Sion's stats, you just can't take his win rate at face value. A lot of people grief games by Gon Lethality's Scion. When you separate Sunfire and Frostfire Scion from Prowler's Claw, his win rate goes way, way up. You get way more consistent results as a tank. While you may not have that massive burst of damage that Lethality does, you actually do more damage over the course of the fight because you just live forever. After several patches of being really high win rate in the top lane, Zack has fallen off quite a bit, so we're moving him down to the A tier. He's a bit more situational than before, but not so situational that we have to put him in the B tier. Poppy's tearless placement is basically a wild roller coaster ride. She shifts so heavily depending on what's in the meta, and right now, she's on the downswing. She's never really a bad pick, so she's still solid enough to make the A tier. Orin drops down to the A tier. Orin is still a really safe pick. He has good team fighting, and being able to upgrade your allies' mythics means that your whole team scales harder, but his individual carrying power isn't so great right now. Cho'Gath moves up to the A tier. His passive makes him a really strong laner, so you can actually almost win all of your lanes by the War of Attrition. He's also a really strong fighter once he gets some items and have his ultimate, but his glaring weakness is that he isn't always the best in 5v5s. He's very tanky, but his only CC is pretty difficult to hit, making him prone to being kited by hyper carries pretty badly. Tom Kench moves all the way down to the C tier. He just gets smacked around by the vast majority of the meta picks after his recent nerfs. He still does okay against some bruisers, or he can abuse a combo of Bramble and Bombies, but at this point, pretty much any other tank would do the same thing, but better. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Gragas' performance has skyrocketed out of nowhere, so we're moving him up to the S tier. Usually, you can always find some type of reason, even an indirect one that explains why a champion is doing better or worse. But in this case, there really isn't one. The meta has more or less been about the same in the jungle for many patches in a row. We'll be moving Kane back up to the S tier. Try SA Mage to nerf him, Riot just can't really fix Kane being broken. His early game isn't great in terms of fighting strength, but his clear speed is so quick and healthy that you can't really punish him. He gets to free scale, and Ross is just super good right now with all that strong beefy champions in the meta. As with the top lane, Zack's sort of inexplicably fallen off in the jungle. He's still a solid 8 tier pick, but nowhere near as strong of a carry as the higher tier tanks. Lilia moves up to the B tier. She's still really situational. Just because she's pickable doesn't mean she's the best option. Picks like Fiddle and Gragas are just generally better in most cases, but if the enemy team is really tanky and prone to kiting, she's a really good option. Olaf moves down to the B tier. He's only really valuable when there's a lot of CC on the enemy team to get value out of his ultimate, and even then, you don't want to lock him in if the enemy ADC is a tank shredder like Kogma or Vayne. 
After months and months of being a god tier pick across the board, Wukong is finally doing mediocre enough that we can finally move him down to the B tier. While most B tier picks are situational ones that can really do well against certain comps, he's here more so because he's just really average. Echo also gets moved down to the B tier. Like Wukong, it's not really a case because of situation here. He's just really average compared to the strong picks. Kiana drops all the way down to the bottom of the D tier. She was hit insanely hard this patch. Both her passive and first strike got hit with their own nerfs. And right bug fixed her passive proccing a second time when you run first strike. Now she's just awful. It's much harder to get a lead, and even when you do, it means so, so much less than before. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Surprise, surprise, Singe is right back being in the OP tier. Riot just really doesn't want to see him not be good, so the second that he was in the middle of the pack, they immediately had to push him over the top. Zed has seen a pretty big spike in success lately, so we're moving him all the way up to the S tier. He definitely needs some good mechanics to really carry games with him, but once you have those down, he can easily be the best assassin in the game. Malzahar is one of those safe reliable picks that can get consistent results later on into the game, but his lag of early game presence prevents him from being any higher than the A tier for now. After her nerf last patch, Seraphine's stats plummeted, but as players have adapted to playstyles in their builds, she's risen back up a bit. She's still a pretty good scaling pick, but obviously not nearly as OP as before, so we're just moving her up one notch to the A tier. Azir drops all the way down to the C tier. He has little to no early game presence, takes too long to come online in this meta, and once he does, he's still not as strong as a lot of the other meta picks. Just like in the jungle, Kiana mid was hit super hard by the nerfs on this patch. That being said, she still has the benefit of having solo lane gold and XP, so she's not quite as bad as she is in the jungle. So she'll be in the C tier for this role. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. We weren't 100% sure where Sivir would end up after receiving yet another round of pretty big nerfs, but we've leaned towards her still being in the OP tier at the start of this patch. After giving it some time, it turns out we were right. She's still the best traditional ADC in the game by quite a bit, and the only one that's good enough to be in the highest tier at the moment. Ziggs drops down to the A tier. He's doing fine in his niche of neutralizing the lane by perma shoving it, but when it comes to actually carrying the games, he just isn't nearly as good as the higher tier picks. Vayne drops down to the B tier. Basically, you'll only want to pick her when you need a tank buster. Even then, Kogma might be a better option in most cases, unless you really need her self-sufficiency. Jinx is finally at least being decently playable, so we're moving her up to the B tier. She's generally overshadowed by the other hyper carries like Twitch and Kogma that comes online with just one or two items. Interestingly enough, Kalista losing a huge 3 base AD didn't actually change her performance by that much, so we're moving her back up to the C tier. I just think that this goes to show that Kalista has little to do with just being a stat checker. The reason that Kalista does so well in pro play versus solo queue is that she requires a lot of coordination and aggression. So missing 3 AD or not, her win rate is going to come down to the skill difference between the laners. Senna gets demoted all the way down to the D tier. She's already doing pretty met in her main role as a support. If you try to pick her as an ADC right now, you're just trolling. She loses lane early, and doesn't scale well since you don't get as many souls while farming, so you just end up being useless at all stages of the game. To finish off, we have our supports. Fiddlesticks is doing a little bit worse off than before, so we're moving him down to the S tier. This means that he's obviously still a really good pick, but just not quite as auto-win as before. Zillion also moves down to the S tier. He's still a really strong scaling pick, but all of the champions in our OP tier just have too much lane dominance and control over how the game plays out in comparison to him. As with every other role, Zack has suddenly dropped in performance here as well. It's really hard to tell why. They haven't changed him. In all roles, it doesn't seem like the meta has shifted. Maybe Riot secretly shadow nerfed him or something. With enchanters being blanket nerfed via their items last patch, Morgana has become a lot more viable, so we're moving her up to the A tier. Senna has really fallen off hard with the last few patches. It doesn't feel like that long ago when you would just roll every lane and scale infinitely to become a monster mid to late game carry. Now she just seems to lose or scrape by in most lanes, and the game's all but decided before she reaches that point where she can be useful. Her mediocre performance lands her in the B tier. Rakan is also moving down to the B tier. A well-played Rakan has some of the strongest team fighting, but his laning phase is just really weak, so you and your ADC are often pretty behind. As a result, you're reliant on the rest of the map doing well, or just having really strong wombo combo potential. This makes him overall pretty coin flippy. Annie moves up to the B tier as a situational pick. Specifically, you want to pick her with some aggro ADCs, like Samara or Tristana, who can fully commit to her all-in attempts. And that about wraps things up for our 12.15 mid-patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I am so sorry that my voice is killing me right now, but thank you so much for bearing with me. Anyway, feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall into the tier list in the comment section down below. Also, feel free to check out the description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.